is going to present her idea around community connected commerce. Welcome. so that every $10 counts. For the business owner, it provides direct marketing via the app, the website, direct mail campaigns, and it reaches customers at and around the point of sale, and it provides an added reason to shop local. Participation in loyalty programs around the world is up 19% since 2007, and one third of consumers find royalty programs more important when battling tough times. Customer spending in loyalty programs is 46% higher with companies that offer reward card programs. And it is good for the retailer as well in that 90% of the best in class retail enterprises, obviously read the sign, uh, some level of success to very successful results from their loyalty programs. And it captures so many levels of local shopping. It is great for the environmentalists who believe that we drive too far and spend too much money in getting our things. It ap appeals to the minimalists who are trying not to spend so much on consumer spending, getting them to spend it here. It appeals to those that are into the organic and the local market and buying local. So it appeals on a lot of levels. In July 2009, September 2nd, the pilot project I spoke about, 3,500 residents in and around White Court participated in the program. And 45% of the shoppers used their card more than once. They shopped in more than one location of the 20 that were involved. So that's my C to the power of three, community connected commerce through the app. But my original intention was to add another element, the charity element. 
That's what takes it to the next level. C to the power of 3 times E to the power of 3. And that E3 stands for Education, Empowerment, and Entrepreneurship. Specifically to the cause that I am most, in case you haven't figured out from the purple hair and the tiara, is family violence. In addition to being a local shopping app, it will also disguise, it won't be really disguised because everybody's going to know about it, but it will have the features that are featured in the Aspire app, which Dr. Phil's wife, Robin, originally helped uh, generate the interest in that down in the States. And basically what it does is when you click on the app, it provides different uh, levels of help for people that are armed in domestic violence relationships to local uh, authorities that they can t touch base with, and also different articles and um, resources that they can use to help them to get through the situation. Now my vision originally and continues to be to have a camp-based retreat program for families so that they can go together and heal together um, in an environment away from home in order to give uh, the survivors the tools they need to get through that really hard period after leaving and to prevent the going back that is so common. However, since I heard about Wellsprings transitions, uh, transitional building that they want to do, I prefer that that money go into, instead of to this vision, which was originally estimated to cost $80,000 a year, to have that money shifted into, the trans into supporting the transitions program through Wellspring. Now, the reason for domestic violence, this app could be attached to any charity organization that you could imagine. Family violence is especially important to me, and that's why I chose it. And one of the reasons that it should be important to everybody, whether they've lived through it or not, is that domestic violence does cost billions of dollars <coughs> a year in lost revenue, in health care, and in the support services that we need to provide. And by um, helping in domestic violence situations, you get an effective return rate of $20 for every dollar invested into the program. And that's from the Alberta School of uh, Policy Research. It was done in 2012, and so those are Alberta numbers uh, for the program. So, that's the equation, <coughs> $30,000 to make the equation reality. Can I go first? I have a suggestion. I, I like that. Yeah. I, you know, um, we donate pallets of bottled water from our company each year. We the company that um, labels them for us. We get to pick the chairs that we want. And out of that, they, um, I think I pay a penny and they also top a penny up. So two cents of every bottle that we give away or sell or whatever. So, yeah. but we get to pick the charity. So we pick stars. But there's a list of like 30 or 40 things mm -hmm. we can pick. So that's a neat way that people could customize it. But your way could work great too. What I'm wondering about is how do the mechanics of it work? So somebody's at my checkout and first off, I've already got a loyalty program because of whatever my banner is. So I've got to add one more and almost everybody's got a yeah, Not the smaller things. retailers. Now, certainly retailers like <coughs> yours, whether it's the PetroCan or whether it's ASSO, they do have loyalty reports programs. But this one would also appeal to those that don't already Which have them. Which is awesome. But for the ones that do, it's got to make sure that it's compatible. The other part is it's got to be really fast. So you come up and you buy something for $20. And how do you get your card stamped, your app scanned? What, what happens? How would you do it? Um, that would have to depend on the, the specific development because this is not an existing app. The, the part of the investment is into creating the app. But the way that I have seen it done is with the app, something similar to what the PetroCount is. You just tap it in and they do the scan and you're good to go. I wonder if there's technology out there that you can make it so that the, the shop owner has the least of technology mm -hmm. and you as the buyer with your smartphone has the most technology. And so I just need something that's secure that wouldn't allow someone to cheat that has the Absolutely. App. Absolutely. And that would be something that we'd talk with the developer about. I'm, I'm sure it's possible. You'd, I wonder if it exists out there already though. But there's somebody that's developed this and then as a, you know, you could buy the franchise for, for Whitecourt and then you go and get the businesses to buy it. Yep. 
And there are some programs that I have looked into, um, and it could be the development or the buying of the uh, of the app. I wonder if you can tie it to the Chamber of Commerce and have it so that they promote it for you. You're just the <laughs> person who coordinates it all and is the owner of the franchise. Everybody wins. Well, and, and, and the thing that I saw as a possibility, like, I mean, really all I want to do is get it started. I'd be more the consultant type and, and want to, in, in the plan, uh, there is staff involved in the selling and the content creation. Any other questions? Well, I have a, we have your mouse. I would be interested as a customer, not as a trustee. And sort of over my head, all this technology stuff. Mm -hmm. Talk about. But I mean, it's great. I would, I would throw in as a, as a business in town, as a chamber member, to support those sort of Christmas promotions. Or, or, and, 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 you know, to tie it into family balance is, is good. And so it's, it's easy to say yes to something like that. Um, fantastic. Thank you. 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 Curious with, with the business side of that, with the businesses, have you talked to them about it just to see what they're, that they, they would have to buy in on this as well? No, I haven't. This originally was a, uh, an idea that died back in 2008, and it was just one that I thought was ready to resurge again, yeah. and so that's why I brought it. So I haven't really talked on a local level um, with anybody. It's more of the idea and the uh, development stage. I like what Jim's saying because I, I think with all the different apps that are out there, there's got to be a technology out there that you can piggyback on mm -hmm. to bring that into the community to get the support and, and, and provide funds for a very, very good cause. Um, I think if you could find some way to buy, call it a franchise, but I don't know what you Yeah, but, yeah, I, you know, I know what I'm you're sure talking about. I'm sure there's some yeah. developer out there that says, A license is what we call it in the software industry. It would be a license to, you yeah, find a license to use it. To and you could already prearrange the buy-in from other groups that support business, and then the buy-in from a couple businesses to start with. You've got a couple right here. I, mean, um, I think it would be very easy for the people at this table to find you the money to buy that license. For the you run it, but um, I think that would be a great investment. You just need more information. I know the, the SNAP program that we got in place in the chambers of probably 10 years ago worked really great, but we always talked about what if somebody uh, just went and bought one of the stamps and then just stamped to their heart's content. Now, luckily, it's a draw, and there were so many thousands of entries in there, they would have mitigated it. But you just have to figure out how to get around that. I'm sure somebody's already figured it out. And as a lower income person that was trying to participate in the program, one of the major um, hurdles for me was getting to the point where I actually got a stamp because I'd often go into the grocery store and spend $10, $11 and not be able to get those stamps. Even though I might be doing it on a daily basis, I wouldn't actually get any stamps because my total purchase wasn't $20. And so that was one of the things that I found um, difficult. And the fact that you have to spend $200 in order to get an entry into the draw yeah. at all. And, and to, I like the app idea. Yeah. I know what the cards with the stamping before. I always left my, I would get my groceries and I'd go home and I'd, I'd leave my uh, little card on the table home. or I'd lose it or I'd switch persons and after the contest was over I'd end up looking and finding I'd find 10 or 15 different cards that were half full. Yeah. So the and this would be, yeah, idea. and this would be a one sign up and you could do it by the family or by the individual and it'd be easy enough to coordinate. The technology is there, it's just a matter of pulling it together. I'm going with the dragon philosophy that I don't know enough about it so I'm not in. <laughs> and, you know, the one thing you did say, Patricia, was that you're looking for thirty thousand dollars, but you're looking you're looking to not be involved. So, where does the thirty grand go? It I mean, goes it just... to the development of the app and but who's the gonna... initial. Uh, well, you, you hire somebody. I mean, there's people out there that uh, you get the connections, and, and it'd be easy enough to hire a programmer to do it once you know what you want done. It's, that's part of the investment was towards the, and the other thing is that once it's developed in one community, we have the ability to sell it in others so, as well. So are you pitching us an idea that we're supposed to take and, and bring to light, or are you telling me that you're, that's what I'm, that's where I'm lost? Well, I'd be in on the initial stages of it, hiring the right staff, getting the right developer, but after that point it would be the staff that would take care of the day-to-day -day operation. So do you think that $30,000 is slightly light on your 
Not according to the numbers that I've run. It might be a little light, but as far as the numbers I've run for the program, it, it was within reason. And Glenn, did you have anything to add? Um. 30,000, what would that, I, I, I know Dave asked the question, but mm -hmm. in terms of the company, is it a percentage of shares? Like, are you going to be the owner of this? I'm a little bit confused there. Yeah, and that's where I just wanted to bring the idea to life. I'd be willing to have somebody invest in it and take it over. Um, I'd be willing to invest, uh, you know, have somebody come and invest and, you know, uh, have me as a consultant. I, I wasn't uh, clear on what direction I wanted to go. I just wanted to pretend. <laughs> okay. I think if you came back to with um, the research, find an app that can work the buy-in from a few other players, the Chamber of Commerce is enough. And then bring it to us and say, this is what it's going to cost to buy it, and this is what I'm going to do to run it, and would you like to be an owner of it? I think that's the next step. And this is the investment that we need to make it work. Thank you so much. Thank you.